So I got the little army here to help me bring some of these plants back to my house. I just got a call from Chris Hansen. Chris is planting up one of our ponds that we finished just a couple weeks ago. Bringing in a bunch of really cool aquatic plants. Let me show you what we're gonna be doing here today. We got two Victoria water lilies, which is from the Amazon. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ed over at Team Aquascape. I'm standing at our corporate facility, Aqualand, located in St. Charles, Illinois. Aquatic plants. The diversity is unbelievable. So right now, these are all basically our marginal aquatics. We have water lilies and things out there. So what Chris is focusing on today is planting up some marginal aquatics like this. These are going into our wetland filter. And then he's also bringing in some water lilies. The water lilies will go down in the main part of the pond. What I want to talk a little bit about today, though, is the importance of the aquatic plants. So why don't we take a ride over to Chris, see what he actually has in store for us, and we can continue this discussion. Oh, look, it's Austin. Hey, buddy. Hey, we're about to pull up. Just pull around. I'll meet you by the front waterfalls. Okay, sounds good. See you soon. <laughs> that is so exciting. I came in here on a Sunday. This is uh, Austin Roth of Lucky Landscaping down in Jupiter, Florida. I met him a year ago when I built Paul Cafaro's pond. He came out and he is a quite a dynamic kid with a pretty big business as a 16 year old that's still in high school. And I paid him to drive my aquatic plants, my tropical lilies all the way up. And here he is right here. Check this out. <laughs> You must be the tree guy. What's your name? I'm Nick. Hi, Nick. And here's the man himself, Austin. Welcome to Aqualand for the first time, buddy. Yeah. How are you guys feeling? How long, how long have you been in a car for? What, 20 hours. Guy, yeah, that's not bad. Straight yeah. through, huh? Easy. Pull around and park and let's get some lunch. So this young man got all my lilies from Florida Aquatic Nurseries, my buddy down there, Brandon. So all tropical plants ready to go in the pond right when it turns 70. It just turned 70 this weekend. This is one of your buddies, it's a tree guy? Yeah, he has a tree business down in Fort Lauderdale. And this is what year for you in your business, Austin? I've been doing it since I was eight, so I'm 16 now. <laughs> And how many guys you got working with you? Uh, three full time. That's pretty awesome. This is pretty sweet. We got to look at these plants. Oh yeah. Woohoo! just arrived over at the job site and this is a job site that I am very very familiar with because we just completed it a couple weeks ago but Brian and I were on this project for weeks. I'm back on it again and this time it's gonna be for some fun stuff so let's check out what Chris has over here. Hey what's up Chris? What's up Eddie? How are you? I'm good dude. Excellent excellent mm -hmm. check this out I'm liking it what do you got for us today? We have a cornucopia of aquatic plants nice. so as you know and you've said many times the aquatic plants the vegetation just really softens up all that that rock and mm -hmm. kind of that hardness of it. Cool pickerel you got forget pickerel. me not you got irises you got all, all types of, of good stuff. Creeping Jenny you got some bloody dock in there. Oh I love it. Chameleon plants we've got some hardy water lilies. Uh-huh. I've got one in here. So I also have a bunch of really, really nice tropicals in back. Too. Sweet. So, um, I already set those back there. I was just getting stuff ready, kind of pruning it, getting it ready for install. Okay. Fertilizing them. Yep. With our once a year fertilizer. Gotcha. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, nice slow release. Um, so we got lots of little pockets and things like that for yeah. all different types of vegetation, stuff that'll grow in a little bit deeper water. We got some edge type plants. Some vertical elements. Yep. Um, some lower growing stuff. We sell these in our retail stores. Yep. And I couldn't find any like papyrus or any of the elephant ear that were really big. So I think what we'll do is we'll unpot these. Oh, sure. Dice them up. Cool. And then, and then we can stick some of this stuff right there in awesome. the wetland as well, just for that ornamental interest. I love it. All so, right. Well, let's go do it. So these are a couple of those tropicals. Look at the tops of these pens. Dude. Oh man, I love that. that awesome. Yeah. That is gorgeous. And that thing's going to get huge. Huge. <laughs> huge. <laughs> Hugest water lily you've ever seen. <laughs> well, the pond could do it though. I mean, right, a pond of this scale for water. sure. Got another one over there, which is more of a white bloomer. Gotcha. So both day bloomers. 
Uh, and then I've got some other ones, three hardies that'll come back every year. Awesome. When you design this and when we were installing it, we've got these little areas in through here, kind of about 24 inches of water that I think would be great. Yeah, these areas right in here. Yep. So what I think is important about all this stuff from a water quality standpoint, we want to create some of that shading. So the aquatic plants are going to absorb nitrogen. They're going to absorb different uh, compounds out of the water, which helps with overall water quality. But just by having those big masses kind of coming off, uh, over here, create some shading with some of those aquatic plantings that'll help keep the water a little bit cooler. It's the basis of the food chain. You know, a little bit of photosynthesis action uh, down inside of here, it's gonna help round things out. It'll actually add that extra level of biodiversity into the pond by adding in um, some soil, um, different microorganisms that live in and around basically that root zone and around the plants themselves. I mean, they become part of the filtration system in many, many ways. We're just starting to lay everything out, and Chris is already taking his boots off, hopped in the water. How's the temperature? Just right. <laughs> Maybe a little too. <laughs> so with this big tropical over here, you are leaving that in the pot, right? Yeah, I'm gonna leave it in the pot because it's not gonna come back next year, unfortunately. I mean, it's a beautiful plant, but this way it's easily removed, right? Yep. Yep. Um, it's not going to set roots in the in the rock and gravel. I am putting some of the gravel over the top of the soil, just so when I submerge it, yep. as the water fills that container back up, you know, through the bottom and stuff, it's just not going to cloud up that water. Yeah, exactly. That, it also helps with your koi sometimes as well. Yeah, because they get in there and they root around, so yep. trying to prevent that as well. So we're going to tuck that guy kind of right back behind that big boulder, so you're not yep. seeing that pot that well, and that'll be a nice little hidden spot for it. So we have some pickerel over on this side. Um, uh, we're kind of just laying some of this stuff out. Really big fan of this stuff. Gets nice purple uh, blooms on it. It can grow in deeper water. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. This shelf is probably 10, 12 inches deep or so. So we're going to have those big tropicals right over here where Chris is at. And then as a backdrop, we're going to drop in some of that pickerel, which will form a really nice big mass over here. Our goal, not only beautify the pond, but also accentuate waterfalls in the different key areas that we laid out during the construction process. So this hidden little cove, we have this beautiful big outcropping of stone. We want to highlight that. So coming in with those uh, water lilies in front of it, it's really going to help soften that up and it'll draw your attention to that big mass of stone. And then up here in the wetland filter, we're going to grow with some fast growing plants. Irises, they grow pretty quickly, absorb tons of nitrogen. Because of that fast growth, they're constantly absorbing uh, nutrients out of the water. So this is our upflow biological filter. The root zones of this plant are gonna spread their way all through that gravel layer. That's gonna become home to different types of microorganisms that will work symbiotically with the plant material as part of the overall ecosystem. So this little spot right here in the foreground, we have our stairs going on over here. This is gonna be a patio. Uh, this is gonna be a terrestrial planting bed. Nothing gonna be very large here. It'd be more ornamental, low growing type stuff. We wanna start to disguise up some of these different areas. So this creeping jenny right here is a perfect plant. It's gonna grow right in this really shallow area could already see some leaf debris and stuff like that building up in there. So that's an area where there's a lot of accumulation of organic compounds. So this plant, I will pull it out of the pots. We're gonna move some of that gravel and that'll spread and kind of soften all that stuff up. And that plant will kind of trail and grow and spread its way through all of that rock and gravel. It's really gonna kind of blend this and then it will transition into terrestrial plantings that are gonna be on the outside. Pulled the plants out of their pots. This is what it looks like right when it comes out. What I typically do, especially with a plant like this, I'm going to fray the edges of the, uh, the roots. But what we want to do is take away a majority of the soil. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to force the plant to suck up the nitrogen and the nutrients out of the water. I do like a little bit of soil on there, especially in a brand new pond. They did just add some fish, but this pond is going to be nutrient deficient. And that's because there's not a lot of stuff inside of here. The fish have not been in long enough. They're not producing enough ammonia yet into the water. So these plants may struggle in the beginning. 
So that's why we're gonna have a little bit of that soil on there. That'll keep the plants growing pretty well. And as the nitrogen and the cycle starts to evolve over time, it will naturally feed the plants and these guys will start to grow and creep through all of this area. So I got the little army here, my kids and their friends to help me bring some of these plants back to my house. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Look at that. We got two Victoria water lilies, which is from the Amazon. They are coveted and he really scored. Man, we got a bloom coming up, it looks like. Wow, there's another leaf unfolding. So you actually water these on your way up here, huh? kept the, the petals alive. Brian, this is why we had to hire a guy to bring them up because they can't ship these commercial freight for obvious reasons. I just tried to grab one and it spiked, it yeah. spiked me. Perfect, that's why I brought you here. So we are slowly working our way around the pond. I uh, just put in a cluster of the small uh, sweet flag over here. Got the bloody dock over on that side. Again, just trying to highlight uh, some of the stonework. This will provide a little bit of shade in the corner. So some of these shallow perimeters either accumulate debris, they might get some algae growth and things like that. The plants will help with that. So as those plants grow up, they'll help to shade that area, provide a little bit of a micro habitat for birds, for pollinators and things like that that are gonna come down to the edge of the water. So remember, this little zone right here, right where the water meets the land, this is known as a riparian habitat. At. This is highly biologically diverse. So lots of different plants and animals are associated with these little areas. Right now, this is a pretty sterile environment. There's no algae growth even. We have a little bit of algae growth. You can see a little bit of a green slime, I guess, on top of those rocks. So they're starting. We have the basis of the food chain has begun. And this is critical. So a pond like this, it takes time to age. The bigger the body of water, the less fish we have per gallon. It takes a little bit of time for everything to get established. So this may take the entire season until it really gets balanced out. Also see down over on this side, we have mosses are starting to take over. Those mosses were originally on that rock. This is a sandstone based rock. It's gonna actually absorb moisture. You could actually see kind of a, a wet edge right there. That's because a little bit of the splashing, that's allowing all of that uh, moss to take off. This area down here, this is where the leaf debris is gonna start building up. And that's because this is acting as our skimmer filter. Any debris across the pond is gonna get swept down into this lower basin. So now our maintenance process is gonna be taking this material out. Now in a brand new pond, this material is the start of the ecosystem. As this material starts to break down, there's not a lot of fish. This is gonna release dissolved nutrients into the water. They're gonna to help to feed our aquatic plants. Now, we will want to minimize this because if we let this go unchecked, it will continue to decompose. Um, it may release tannins into the water, which could give that tea-colored water. We want enough nutrients to create beautiful aquatic plants. We don't want to have an overabundance of algae. We want good, healthy water for our fish. So we're constantly playing back and forth with having that right balance. And what we've done is we set the framework up. Aquatic plants are looking great, everything has been installed, and these are gonna continue to naturalize everything, and I'm loving to see some of that algal growth inside of here. Uh, that means the ecosystem is starting to get established. This project is gonna look spectacular once the landscaping is completed. That's the missing piece. A pond is a reflection of the watershed, so you wanna make sure that you have the right plant material around the perimeter that will help to shade it that will help to stabilize all of the soils around the perimeter. We have been inundated with rain throughout this entire spring, early summer season. So all of that material runoff is coming inside of the pond. So we wanna make sure that we have a good, healthy environment. And it starts with having those building blocks, putting in the right plant material, 
having the right bacteria, the enzymes, the flow rates, all of these things working synergistically together to give us the results that we're looking for. Boy, this is really gonna be spectacular. You can start to see, see those fish down there, that's five feet deep. Water's starting to get clear. It's gonna take still a little bit of time. They don't look stressed at all, and they're gonna start to feed on all the different microorganisms that are starting to colonize this beautiful ecosystem pond. We are at Greg Wittstock's backyard now, and we're gonna get it cleaned up. We're taking these three plants, and we're gonna be placing these in the bog up on top, and then we have to put another planter over by the cattails. pond guy for well i've been a hobbyist for 37 years and the pond guy for 28 and i've never done this before we're going to drive a wheelbarrow into a pond <laughs> this thing is so sharp i'm not touching it so i want to say thanks to brandon mclean down at florida aquatic nursery i was good buddies with his dad and uh, he's taking over the operation and he did me right beautiful victorias and some tropical lilies so this thing's not that deep it's pretty shallow here it's going to get full sun right in this spot right here I can honestly say thank you Lucky Landscaping for bringing these up no and I love my job.